दिस इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन बिकॉज एच बी ए वन सी इज अ कंटिन्यूस ग्लूकोस मॉनिटरिंग सिस्टम ऑल्सो नोन एज सी जी एम विच हैज बीन शोन टू प्रोड्यूस अ सिग्निफिकेंट रिडक्शन इन एच बी ए वन सी लेवल इन डायबिटिक पेशेंट्स बाय ड्रग मॉडिफिकेशन और चेंजेस एंड डोज एडजस्टमेंट्स फ्रॉम टाइम टू टाइम सो एच बी ए वन सी हेल्प्स इन डूइंग दैट यू नो and the diabetes complications and control trial which is a famous trial known as dcct has established that glycosylated hemoglobin that is a1c is the gold standard of glycemic control of in which levels less than 7% are deemed appropriate for reducing the risk of vascular complications which are the result of hyperglycemia induced oxidative stress now the major focus for physicians should be uh, the control of hyperglycemia with hba1c less than 7% so as to delay the progression of diabetes to the stage of complications this is to be done by a step wise addition of therapeutic agents so as to achieve hba1c less than 7% now the risk of cardiovascular disease that is cvd events which include myocardial infarction stroke or cardiovascular death is increased by uh, pre diabetics and di- and diabetes now hba1c more than 7% is well known to be associated with retinopathy neuropathy and nephropathy these are some of the bad complications of uh, diabetes or even pre diabetes where hba1c is more than 7 now hba1c as i said is a risk factor for developing hypertension also there are four main reasons for this why uh, hypertension can cause you know diabetes and other things number one hypertension causes insulin resistance then hypertension causes diabetic nephropathy then it causes volume volume expansion and then there are the macro and micro vessel changes now hypertension hypertension is prevalent uh, 1.5 to 3 times more in diabetic in diabetic patients when we compare it to the general population when we diagnose hypertension in diabetics uh, or in a diabetic with hypertension it is too late for preventing the future complications so it is prudent to keep the hba1c level less than 7% in the general population in pre diabetics and in all diabetics also now ambulatory bp monitoring helps to identify the patients at risk of cardiovascular disease as well as kidney disease in those patients who have hba1c more than 7% moreover when hypertension and diabetes coexist <clears throat> the mortality due to cvd increases at least four times when compared to those who do not have both these diseases why because individuals with hba1c more than 7% or diabetes have increased expression of glycoprotein 2b uh, oblique 3a receptors and the von willebrand factor which are responsible for platelet activation and aggregation which leads to all those clotting uh, you know uh, problems and uh, you know myocardial infarctions and uh, thrombus formation uh, now uh, these patients also have decreased fibrinolysis and increased thrombus formation which accelerate the plaque formation in the arteries there uh, there are decreased levels of anticoagulants in such patients anticoagulants such as protein c and antithrombin 3 so all these factors predispose those with hba1c more than 7% to a prothrombotic or procoagulant state which may account for the higher rates of myocardial infarction so that is why hba1c should always be kept less than 7% you know prevention is better than cure it's a well known saying you know age old saying now uh, there is a myth that you know diabetes only affect people who eat junk food now junk food is uh, or fast food as we all know is well known to produce insulin resistance because of its various ingredients and oils and all those things you know which can in turn cause weight gain and diabetes however even healthy pe- people who are not obese who are lean individuals can develop in- insulin resistance which can lead to diabetes now it is actually the visceral fat 
which increases the chances of developing diabetes people who may look fat you know that is the you know a subcutaneous fat that may not lead to diabetes but the visceral fat which is there around the organs you know that is the fat which causes the risk of developing diabetes now eating foods high in sugar trans and saturated fats um can increase uh, the visceral fat and uh, the raised blood sugar even in the lean individuals then they, therefore instead of eating sugary fatty and processed or fried foods one should eat complex carbohydrates like fruits vegetables brown rice whole wheat lentils beans etc then again alcohol can lead to fatty liver disease which again can cause diabetes then there's another thing stress now people who are not eat, eating junk food but who are always stressed you know in these people the body releases cortisol which in turn raises the blood sugar level and so on and so forth then again people who are not eating junk food but their lifestyle is such you know they are physically inactive they are sedentary you know the workers and uh, all these people also have uh, the risk factors for developing diabetes so it's actually a myth that uh, only junk food can cause diabetes there are so many other things so as physicians we should uh, always take a good history from the patient you know we should know the lifestyle of the patient and we should ask him what he eats for breakfast lunch dinner and uh, when he snacking uh, what he takes in the snacks and all these things are very important and which oils he is using you know in the house for cooking you know so these are very important things in uh, you know helping the patients uh, you know can keep the diabetes under control or pre diabetics not to advance to the stage of diabetes